Hello, my beautiful nerds. I was lucky enough to take part in a two day early event, virtual event for the War Within Alpha. Uh, thank you so much to Blizzard for including me in that. I was invited, I was able to play the Alpha. I've been playing it nonstop for the past two days. And now, finally, we can release these videos. So this video is going to be a little bit more of a stream of conscious, just kind of talking about my uh, first impressions, if you will, with the alpha. Let me know in the comments below, though, what are you specifically looking for when seeking out content relating to the alpha? I have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, uh, but let me know in the comments below what you would like to see uh, from me or from anybody else about future content regarding the war within. So this is going to be a little bit more, like I said, stream of conscious. Uh, I was going to script something, but I figured, you know what? Let's just sit down. Let's talk about the alpha. So you'll be seeing a ton of footage now in the background uh, from various parts of the alpha that I was able to do. One of the things that I want to talk about right away, though, is something that I'm a little concerned about coming out of Shadowlands and Dragonflight and coming into the World Soul Saga, the War Within, a three expansion saga that is supposed to be, according to Metzen on the stage at BlizzCon, is supposed to be this incredibly huge, amazing narrative experience. Think of it as like how Final Fantasy XIV tackles their main story, their MSQ, if you will, right? That was the... That is what I interpreted from BlizzCon. That is the weight that they want this story to have is similar to like the Zodiac and Heidelin arc or and now it's it's the World Soul Sock. That's how it felt to me. If you didn't feel that way, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that because to me, it felt like th we're taking our time with this story. We're going to make sure that this story is impactful. So one of the things that I'm really worried about going into the war within is that the story is overlooked, that the the main story, the main narrative doesn't carry the weight that it needs to to sustain a, uh, the World Soul Saga for three expansions. That's six years, friends, at least, right? That's a six year story that we need to be invested in right away. You know what I mean? And if we're not, I feel like that's going to give us, uh, at least for me, it's going to make me a little apprehensive about the next two expansions, Midnight and The Last Titan, if The War Within doesn't doesn't show me that the story is impactful. So anyways, the, the thing I want to talk about is the narrative that we've seen so far in the alpha. Now, I want to, there should be a timestamp, it'll show up somewhere that will allow you to skip this section if you don't want any spoilers. But before I say that, uh, before you skip, anyways... It's important to note that I don't have the context for a lot of the story. Uh, the way that they kind of showed it to us was you play, something happens, and then you re you're revealed to be on a beach. We don't really know the nitty gritty of how we got there. We just see the aftermath. So take all of that with a grain of salt. So it's not super spoilery, and it's right away. It's right when you start The War Within. It's the intro experience into The War Within. So spoilers might be uh we'll see when we as as alpha testers in this first this very early the earliest build possible right that wasn't just internal testing the first thing that they have us do is uh you lo you you show up in in stormwind or ogremar and either jaina or thrall uh whispers in your ear about visions that they are receiving from azeroth and uh, something about uh, you've been receiving them too. Everyone, a lot of people have been receiving these visions and, and it's time to figure out what's going on with it. So you go to Magni over by the sword and Silithus, what sword? And you find out that Magni has been seen for a while and Magni is actually having like a little bit of an existential crisis. And it's that I love that actually. It feels a little weird because we don't get to see him slowly have that, right? It's the last time we saw Magni, he was uh, is your wins, you she's got wins, and all that stuff. And then now we see him, and he's he's like, Well, she used me, Azeroth used me, and then discarded me, and no longer needs me as a speaker. And I'm pissed about it. I can't hug my family anymore. I can't feel their touch. I'm just a rock, right? Which is cool. Don't get me wrong. It's cool. But but I, I would have liked to see that happen, 
we help Magni and he tries to commune with Azeroth and he hasn't done it in a while. Something happens and he is knocked unconscious. So we take him to Dalaran uh, I'm, uh, because only the mages of Dalaran can help him. Okay. And while we're there, Cadgar, Cadgar's there, uh, we get to meet up with Moira, uh, who is Magni's daughter, married the the, the leader of the, the Dark Iron Dwarves way back. And uh, she's had a baby for a very long time. And we finally get to see Dagrin the second here, or however many he is. Uh, we get to see him. He's grown up now. And he's there too. And he's he's excited to meet his uh, hang out with his granddad a little bit more. But they're nervous. So they're at his bedside. That's where it stops. That's where it stops for us playing the alpha. We don't get to see anything else. We talk to this big Torin thing that's not a real character. It's just an NPC to facilitate alpha stuff. You talk to him. The next thing you know, y'all, this is where it gets spoiler. We're on the beach of the Isle of Dorne, which we've already heard about at BlizzCon. The Isle of Dorne is home to the Earthen. It is our, our entryway into the, into the Earth where uh, the rest of the expansion takes place. So it's the first zone that we're all going to be deposited in when we get to uh, the War Within. It's a great zone. We'll get into that. On this beach, you're being attacked by Norubians. Interesting. And when you look around on the beach, there is just ruins spewed everywhere of Dalaran. Dalaran is gone? Dalaran is destroyed. It's all around you. When you look around the beach, you can find the flower cart. You can find the toy vendor's uh, inventory all spewed around. There is even a rare spawn that shows up and it rotates who it's going to be from prisoners from the violet the violet hold which is the dungeon in doubt how that part's really cool but we don't get to see what happened dalaran's just destroyed around you and you have to go around and you collect them all and it's awesome it's super cool without context though to me it feels a little is this story earned or is this story that's like is it is it there for shock factor did we did Dalaran get destroyed because we need to start off this expansion with a bang? We need a big shocking thing that happens or is it earned? I just I don't know because we don't have the context. So take all of that with a grain of salt for the biggest spoiler yet. They're doing this cool thing with work in progress cutscenes and I'll, I'll show it on screen here. It scrolls like Star Wars, which is awesome, but there's one line in particular. They take a moment for Cadgar. So Cadgar also presumably dies in whatever happens with Dalaran and why it crashes into the Isle of Dorne. Meteoric, a meteoric crash it is referred to as. So we come hard and fast into the, into the, the uh, Isle of Dorne. So anyways, you wake up. You go around, you defeat the Nerubians that are that have ambushed you, and uh, you rescue some of your friends that are there. There's actually a really cool one with Ritzen Flame Scowl, who's one of the Warlock Order Hall guys from Legion, uh, and and more. Um, it, it's a really great, really great thing that you rescue. So you have to rescue all of these important uh, named NPCs, including Bran Bronzebeard, uh, Moira, Dar Dagrin. All of them make it. Jaina, Thrall, Anduin, they all make it. They're all there. While we beat them off. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Alpha gets spicy, y'all. Anyways, uh, this guy comes up. He, he shows up. This earthen dwarf guy, uh, Begrin. He arrives on a griffin and is like, what are you doing here? The Nerubians are attacking us because you're here. How dare you? And then while he's saying that, there's an explosion in a city that is kind of far by, uh, kind of close. It's their city. It's the, the Isle of Dorne city. And you find out that the Nerubians have destroyed something called the Corway. Uh, not the Cori, the Corway. The Corway is basically like this giant elevator type thing that allows access to the ringing, ringing deeps, which is the a zone we have not been able to test yet. Uh, but that is the real like heart of the earthen civilization is the ringing deeps from what, from my understanding. Uh, so... You go to fight off the Nerubians, the Corway gets destroyed, nothing you can do about that. So the rest of that story of that first zone that you go to is figuring out how to, one, 
stop the Nerubians from continuing their attack, and two, to rebuild the Corway. And then the rest of the story kind of happens, and the way we were able to test is from level 70 to 73. Uh, once you finish the the MSQ, if you will, the main story there, uh, the coreway is rebuilt. We can't see it or anything that that's not implemented yet. And you uh, presumably have access to the second zone, the Ringing Deeps. Unfortunately, we don't have that in this build yet, so wasn't able to test that far. So the story feels very uh, shock factory, and I and I don't know if I would say yet that. Um, that it feels impactful or earned. It just feels like a like a shock factor. It feels like a, a catalyst to get us, uh, you know, a, I don't want to say like a low-hanging fruit to get you invested. But right now, without context, that is how I'm feeling. With that said, and this is what worries me, there are side quests that are there, you know, for the, the Sojourner's uh, achievements and all the side quests you can do around the zone for the rep and all of that stuff. That is so good so good the problem is we had the same thing in dragonflight y'all where we would do these side quests that were like awesome like oh my heart my heart you know we have all the 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 calogos blue dragon quest line which was amazing we have the the uh bane stuff that was awesome we have the side quest with uh uh, blanking on her name now, one of the incarnates, the incarnate Virnoth, with Virnoth, who joins us. All that is awesome. It's so good. But the main story was kind of like, if you believe in love, <laughs> I want the main story to take its time. You know, personally, this is this is my feedback. I want the main story to take its time. One of the things that, I, and I, I, I don't want to compare it to Final Fantasy XIV, because if you know me at all, you know that I think they are wildly different games. World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV are wildly different games. World of Warcraft, though, has the lore, has, the, it has it, to be able to compete with the storytelling that you can find in Final Fantasy XIV. It has that. It just doesn't do it because of the way the games are designed, right? Uh, World of Warcraft is very much get to end game. That's just get to end game. Final Fantasy XIV is like, yeah, end game's cool, but you just go through the story and the story takes its time and it takes you a while to level, but that's how you level is you do it through the story. World of Warcraft is not necessarily that. It's like the world, the story just serves the end game. It's just, it's just there so that the end game it happens right and i and i really sincerely hope going into the war within because in 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 the world soul saga that that ends up not being the design choice of the narrative that the narrative says actually we're going to take your t we're going to take our time um you know maybe just the first time through don't necessarily need to take our time with all of the characters alts and all that but like the first time through i feel like it should be weighty you should it should take some time to get through the story and 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 whatnot and they should take that time really um exploring what they could do with it instead of just here's a character or like instead of just snap 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 we're gonna stop talking a little bit about story here and go into the earthen so we were not able to create any earthen to play as uh however i am the most i want to play as an earthen the most i have ever when they announced the earthen as a, a new race i was like who at why we already have doors just add a customization skin why are we doing an, another like, let's do a cool allied race that isn't something that we already have, right? Um, was kind of my initial my initial thoughts. But after playing the War Within Alpha and seeing how forking cool the Earthen culture is, y'all, I'm a big fan. They are very different than dwarves. Uh, they have, they're very different than dwarves, but they still have some, they have this whole thing about when they die, it's actually called deactivation because they're, they really do just view themselves as, as tools, um, cogs in the machine of the Titans, which, which is very dope. I actually, I, I am very impressed. And that's not to say the, the city itself is one of my favorite cities that World of Warcraft has ever done, y'all. Durna, 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 forgot the name of it right now. I'll find it. It'll show up on screen in a sec. I love it. The city is amazing. I'm going to do a full, if you if y'all are interested, I'm going to do a full city tour because it's so cool. They've done such an amazing job with this thing. Uh, really, really love it. 
I hope I hope other people enjoy it as much as I do because right now it is great. It is a very expansive city, but since you can you can uh, you can uh, sky riding is what they call it now, um, dynamic flight. You can do that right out of the gate, right? So you can zip around the city super easily. It's not a big deal. Um, I wasn't finding anything about the, ex the the sprawlingness of the city to be that big of a deal. Um, so as we know, the the Isle of Dorne is the first the first zone that we get to start in. And y'all, it is beautiful. It is uh, it is it reminds me of like jade forest from mist of pandaria mixed with uh, twilight highlands from cataclysm which was also a very cool zone they, it feels very there's something about it that feels like those two kind of had a baby um and i love it i really do i i thoroughly love that zone i can't wait to spend more time in it um there's still stuff being built there's a, a whole section of the map that you can't go to because it's full of elite 80 mobs and like i can't explore that area because it's full of it and i'll literally just die because i'm level 73 or whatever um so the zone is a, a, a is awesome and as we know that zone is on top of the rest of the expansion right all the other zones are below it uh which i think is which is really cool actually um and I already saw that in the renowned track for the earthen, there is a quick travel between the city and the Nerubian place, which is, as I believe, is the furthest down we can go. So it's the it's the last zone that we'll be able to explore, as far as I know, in um, in the War Within. So I believe we start at the Isle of Dorne. We go down into the Ringing Deeps, which is the real where the real civilization and all that is of the of the um, Earthen, from what I can tell. And then we go to the hallow the hallowed area, uh, which is which is full of the Arathi humans and uh, has that giant crystal that we saw. And that place looks amazing uh, from what I've seen. I haven't been able to alpha test it, obviously. And then I believe it's on 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 another Nerubian area, which i uh, very excited to hear more about the Nerubians since they are one of the most ancient civilizations on Azeroth, period, right? They are sharing uh, ancient civilization with things like the Trolls. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to hear more about the Nerubians and um, filling out some of the lore there that, that, as you can tell, I'm a big lore guy in case you've never watched any of my stuff before. Um, so... I want to talk a little bit about class design and hero talents now. The I am not a big fan of of testing classes out on alpha uh, unless something just like doesn't make any sense or or feels really horrible to play. Um, you know, but like even then it's alpha. The numbers don't matter like it's alpha. You know, the, the numbers will come. Hopefully, um, the the it's just so early. It's so early for me to like, you know, unless something is egregiously wrong when I'm playing it, I'm not testing all of the classes to see. It's just not my thing. Um, so for those of you that are looking for like in-depth class stuff, I play a paladin. I know that's probably the class I know the best. I didn't really test anything extensively when it comes to classes. What I will say is that the hero talents are done in such a way that they don't give you more bloat. And I think that's a wonderful thing. We actually had a Q&A with developers Michael Bybee and Sean McCain. McCann? McCain? McCann? Uh, Pecan. Sorry, Sean. Uh, <laughs> and in the Q&A, they mentioned how um, one of their big things with hero talent design was they didn't want to have uh, an extra button to click. They didn't want to fill out more bloat than what we already have. They wanted to really make those hero talents uh, passive choices that in empower what you already have. And from playing at least Paladin, I, I got to play Retribution Paladin and Protection Paladin through a couple dungeons. Uh, and I do want to check out the Holy Paladin as well because I know that they've had some changes. Um, and they're looking, they look really fun, especially because of the hero talents, y'all. Um, Herald of the Sun is really cool. Templar is my personal favorite. Uh, and then Lightsmith is probably going to be like the strongest uh, paladin. Kind of feels like a, a like a support class built in, which is which is dope because the paladins. If anybody was going to get a support class, I would hope paladins would or uh, support spec. Um, 
so the hero talents, the way that they work is they kind of just, uh, they change the way that your ability works that you're already using rotationally, right? Or or uh, maybe add an extra buff. Um, but for the most part, it's not an extra button to press. Lightsmith does have an extra armament that you use that you can put. Um, it makes it sound like it drops on the ground, but I'm pretty sure you actually just, you target somebody on your team and you, you give it to them and then it works. Uh, you can also give it to yourself for some massive stuff. It also can proc randomly. So it's got, it's got stuff built in. You can make the hero talents. It feels like as easy as you want to deal with, uh, or as, as robust as you want. Um, they've also mentioned that the, the tier sets that they are working on, this was said in the Q and a, but the tier sets that they are working on um are taking into account the hero talents as well so their tier sets are coming back they're definitely going to be working on on that um i'm going to do a video too talking about the q a and some of the things that we learned but i really just want to talk about my impressions of the alpha uh i i mean i again this is like a talking head video so i don't have it scripted but i really i it's wow and that's great Unless you're tired, unless you're you're unless you're burnt out of WoW, you're bored of WoW, you want something new, this is WoW. It feels like more WoW. Uh, I was doing quests and I was like, this is WoW. I'm collecting spores. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Like it just everything feels very WoW. It feels like they took they took Dragonflight and they said, all right, let's do that again. Let's just do that again. Let's do Dragonflight again. Is what it currently feels like with maybe some some uh some twist, which is fine. If they do Dragonflight again, that's great. As long as there is weight to what is happening around us, right? Is in my mind, that would be great. They've said that they don't want it to feel they want to keep that design philosophy of um of the idea that you don't have to log in every single day and do all of this stuff to be up or else you'll fall behind. It, it's very much a play at your play at your pace, play, play at your leisure type of expansion uh, design philosophy, it seems like, going forward. Uh, I personally feel like that's a double-edged sword. I think that momentum is very important in World of Warcraft. I feel like, it, for me anyways, momentum is very important in anything I do. If I'm doing something every day, I'm going to keep doing it. If there's no reason to do that thing for a week, I'm going to suddenly stop doing it for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Uh, that's just the way that that I am, and that might be like an ADHD thing. But the other uh, the other things I was able to do was delves and the two dungeons that we have available: the Rookery and the Cinder Mead, the Cinder Brew Meadery. Uh, and both dungeons, awesome, y'all. They're like so cool. They're dope. They're awesome. They're so, they're great. Uh, the rookery in particular is one that I enjoy because it's a three boss dungeon. Some people don't like that. They want their dungeon to be a little bigger. Not me. I want to start a dungeon. I want to run through. I want to be done and go ba 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 onto the next thing. You know. Uh, again, maybe ADHD there. But no, rookery is great. And the story of the rookery is like really sad y'all like it's real sad there's um there's something corrupting there's something corrupting th the rookery the rookery is where the storm griffin things uh i forgot what they refer to them as but it's where the earthen keep their their storm griffins and where they this is like how they have their power right the storm riders uh those griffins those storm griffins are are being corrupted by the void we have to go in we have to call the place y'all it's the calling of the rookery. Uh, we have to go in and, and basically put everything down because of this corruption. Uh, we basically lose the entire Storm Riders. Uh, so that's a real big defeat for real big defeat, especially when you have Nerubians that suddenly have started attacking. They haven't attacked in hundreds of years. Um, so the rookery uh, is cool. It's a three boss raid. The way that or three boss uh, dungeon, the way that I like to look at it, <laughs> I realized this. Uh, maybe it was because I was really high. Uh, when I was writing some notes, uh, <laughs> the rookery reminds me of the ruby life pools in reverse. So instead of climbing up this giant tower to get to the final boss at the end and dealing with everything in between, uh, it's actually the other way. You start at the top and you work your way down through all of the things into this final boss at the very bottom. Um, it's a three boss raid, just like Ruby life pools. And it kind of actually has like a similar flow and feel to it. But um you like there's a part where you jump down instead of go up uh i'm telling you it's 
it kind of feels like the Ruby Life Pool is in reverse, and I think that's I think that's cool. Like I, I really like Ruby Life Pool is one of my favorite Dragonflight dungeons. So uh the the boss fight at the end is very neat. Um it's a stationary void core boss. Um I don't really remember the other two bosses because they were they were you know tuning is obviously it's alpha so let's not look at the tuning but um they just kind of do stuff there's one there you're fighting a void corrupted storm griffin uh that flies into the center so uh sorry melee it's going to be a great fight for ranged on high mythic stuff uh and not for for melee uh but it's really cool it does a does like a beam thing like the boss from sanctum of domination the the eye boss there that would like spin around to do it does something similar but it doesn't go all the way around maybe it will later uh so you kind of have to clear trash we just cleared it on one side anyways um i'll do a deep dungeon stuff too for both the rookery and the cinder brew meadery uh cinder brew meadery is from talking to folks that were also playing the alpha uh they loved it and i agree um it's a lot of trash but uh, a lot of folks think that the cinder cinder brew meadery is fantastic uh that was the second dungeon that you're able to test and we only had the two and um uh, people loved it i got to i got to run it a few times uh with different folks wochi from the dungeon dojo uh trill who's a a very uh renowned mythic player and raider um uh my my good friend jedith who uh, uh demon hunter extraordinaire um got to run it with with those folks and it was delightful. Manny, true villain Manny from uh, For Azeroth podcast, got to got to run it with him as well, um, and we had a good time. I tanked it and I DPSed it. Uh, there's there's some very interesting boss mechanics. The final boss of that is actually one of my favorites that I've done in a while. When it comes to a dungeon boss, uh, she like throws out these barrels, and you have to use her mechanics to break those barrels that that they then explode and create these lava spawns that um, or cinder brew spawns. Uh, there's also these fiery bees models these fiery bees they look so good and we do get to get one of those as a mount in the future so very excited for that they're beautiful uh if you play a hunter you can probably tame one so that'll be super cool they're very cool looking very big fan of those the other the other big feature of this expansion and i'm sure i'm missing stuff while i think about it but I, there is there is like a couple of things uh, culturally that I want to address with the earthen, but uh, one of the big features of the War Within is this new system. Um, Sean McCain was one of the people that did the Q and A for us. Uh, I went to both. We had two different Q and As, um, and I went to both of them. It was with Michael Bybee and uh, uh, Sean McCain. But Sean McCain do, has done his. his he was in, uh, worked on the. Um, the Caligos Blue Dragonflight quest line uh, did some did some stuff with Corthia. Did uh, as his resume is stacked. Like when he introduced himself, I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> like, yeah, no, I the content you made was good. Um, so he worked on the Delves. Uh, he's like in charge of the Delves, and the Delves for those that don't know are these little uh dungeons i guess you can call them where you can go in with one to uh one to five people i believe one to four people um you can go in i only did them solo uh which is kind of the idea of them going with a friend a couple friends whatever uh but you also get a follower that will join you in there that levels up and whatnot and you can kind of keep them going and they're war bound which i'll get into the war band stuff in a second but um so you go through the delve and it's a seasonal it's going to be a seasonal thing the delve is going to be seasonal so the season one or you know whatever we have right away uh is brand bronzebeard is our buddy in here and he has two different builds that you can do so you can either make brand bronzebeard a healer which is interesting because he also is a hunter uh and they gave him some really cool things like some um if you've ever played heroes of the storm deckard kane is one of the heroes and he throws like these potions out that's how he heals he throws these potions and you uh you know if you're playing with a deckard you have to run over the potions to heal yourself you actually have to go and like you know walk over them to collect them he does the same thing he throws these big vials and potions out and you have to run over those to heal and it's and it's cool uh and then he also is a he has a dps um a dps build as well that you can do instead uh and you can freely swap you don't have to do anything you can just freely swap between if you want to do a delve 
that's getting a little bit harder and you need healing or you're a class that doesn't have a lot of sustain you can just you can just switch to him to a healer no problem you don't have to worry about it. it he levels up the same it's the same um and he has like a his dps kit is like a little bit of an indiana jones thing he has a whip that he can use that also interrupts uh the enemy if they're trying to cast a spell that you can't get to or, or anything like that he, he has a whip that will do that um and he has some other stuff that we don't have access to test out like a utility trinket and something a different type of trinket that he has there um i'll i'll be showing all of the footage on screen so i'm sure you you see it but uh, it's, it's really neat. The delves, uh, one of the things in the Q and a that was talked about is the delves are meant to expand on the world. Um, they're world building. They're not really like main story stuff. One of the very exciting things to me about the delves is that we can push them. So we were only able to test tiers one and two, um, during the alpha. I actually didn't get a chance to test tier one. I just jumped right into tier two. Uh, they don't want you to die on a tier one. They want to make a tier one easy enough where any you just you can just do it. You just blast it. It doesn't matter. Um, tier two is like a little bit harder, but still, I I was never ever in danger of dying during a during one of those. Um, I was playing a prop paladin, but still, I I would be super surprised at the current levels uh, of that if you would die. It was very easy. Um, and then there was a tier three that we can't access just yet, uh, which is at level cap. When you're level cap, you can then do tier three delves. Uh, but they'll also go up to tier 11. Tier 11 is the highest you can do, and that's going to be like pretty hard. But then apparently there's also a tier 13, and a tier 13 is a singular, very difficult boss fight. So they put you in a room in this delve, and you got to fight a boss, and that's it. There's no other, you're, like, you're not running through. It's just one big, so that kind of makes me uh, feel like like a mage towery thing, but for everybody and not spec dependent. And I I am very much looking forward to tackling tier uh, tier 13 bosses for the delves. And those are like a mark of mark of honor for you to do. Um, there's going to be no scaling with the delves. So item level for launch. So item level uh, is obviously going to help make your delves a little bit easier. Um, I mean, scaling based off item level. There's not going to be any scaling based off item level. There is, of course, going to be scaling based off of level uh, from, from what I can tell. Not off item level, though. So if you're a Raider, High Mythic Plus player, any of that, you're probably going to be blasting Delves, no problem. Um, so we're going to hopefully see some low item level Delve challenges. That's what I want to see. I hope people do those. Uh, but the Delves are cool. They're quick. Uh, I think everyone took me like 10 to 20 minutes tops. Um, and there's a really fun progression system. The way that they currently have it is the the highest gear progression that you're going to be able to get because you are going to be able to get gear from the delves uh, in your great vault even. Uh, it's it's a single player progression system is the idea between the, behind the delves. And as as somebody that does like to play solo a lot of the time, uh, and has been wanting to be able to progress my character solo for a very long time in World of Warcraft. Um, this is amazing. So it'll only go up to Mythic 5, but that's still, like, if you're somebody that doesn't do raid or, or anything like that, Mythic 5 gear is going to mean that you dominate everything in the open world anyways. So if you're a collector or you're somebody that just wants to do stuff like that, I think you're really, really going to appreciate the gear that you can get from a delve and, and also just pushing the delves yourself and, and seeing how high you can get. Um, they did say that Torghast, the, you know, they're using some of the stuff they learned with Torghast. So if you're not a fan of Torghast, I actually think that's okay. I, the delves don't feel like Torghast to me. They feel like little dungeons that you're doing by yourself. Um, there are these little power-ups that you can get, but they're nothing like the anima powers in Torghast where you needed certain ones to put. It was it never felt like that at all. It was just like little extra things that you got. Um, not many of them. You wouldn't have 40 powers by the end. Uh, it's also not as long as a Torghast run at all. Um, I, I, think, I think delves are a very cool they're like the mist of pandaria scenarios if you've played those uh which means you're old uh if you've played those mist of pandaria scenarios mixed with torghast um they're also using the they're using the brains from the garrison npcs in warlords of draenor they're using the brains of those npcs the ones that kind of walk around and do their own thing they're using those brains as the followers that you have or the npcs that you have 
with you in Delve. So everyone's going to have brand bronze beard this first season, and then new followers are going to are going to arrive uh, with with different seasons. So I'll do a video that's a full Delve thing too. Again, uh, if you're curious and you want to see a little bit more in depth of different things or you just whatever you want to see from the from the alpha please let me know in the comments below i have a ton of time played i literally played 16 18 hours of the alpha each day for the two days that we were allowed to um so by the time this video is out the alpha is now public so we can obviously if you're seeing this video it means that embargo is over um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna have a lot more to share uh war bands let's talk about war bands real quick uh i didn't, wasn't really able to test war bands because i wanted to test the content that was there and not necessarily like the systems uh although i feel like systems are probably a better idea to test for i don't know i the thing is is like there's gonna be a ton of iterations right it's still alpha um the war bands seem great there's war band gear that you can get so for those that don't know a quick overview of war bands is uh it's account wide the big thing about the Q&A that they talked about is that the design philosophy of World of Warcraft is fundamentally changed. It used to be per character. This is your character. This is your this is this is what that character can do. They have and and Michael Bybee said he cannot stress enough how the design philosophy of those at Blizzard, those with World of Warcraft has changed with this new system and that much more uh this is just the start. This is going to be a much more account-wide experience. So instead of focusing on the character, they want to focus on the player. You are still playing the game regardless of you're on your hunter alt or your main protection paladin. Doesn't matter. You are the player. They want to focus on you. They want to focus on your account. They want to make your account have progress, not just your character. That's a big thing about war bands. It's a big thing that they pushed. It's a big thing that I'm very happy to hear about, to be honest with you. Right now, there are four characters on your your uh, your character selection screen. Those are your favorites. Those are the ones you favorited, up to four. Uh, I think you can have less than that too, but four is is the max right now. Uh, but those that's not your war band. It's not just those four characters. All of the characters on your account are your war band. Even so, when you have those four characters that show up on your character select screen. Those don't all have to be on the same server even. You can still have, like, if you're on Stormrage, if you have characters on Stormrage and you have characters on Proudmoor, you can have them all show up right there on your, like, you don't have to switch realms to see them. They're all right there uh, and, and they share everything. Um, gold will be, obviously, there's like a war band bank that you can do and they all share that bank, uh, including gold and everything else. So no longer do you have to email yourself gold, uh, which is which is great. Um, so, so those systems are great. Uh, yeah, I, war bands, war bands are going to be very useful. There's also gear that you can get that is, uh, instead of soul bound or whatever, it's war, war bound. And, um, if you use it, obviously it's not war bound anymore, but you can send the war bound. It's like the account, account wide gear that we would get rarely, um, like, you know, heirlooms and stuff like that. It's like that, except, you know, not summonable, but, um, yeah, there definitely, definitely a shift in how we play the game there's also you'll be able to buy warband uh warbound gear for your other characters so by progressing your main your main you'll be progressing everybody else on your account um and i and i really i think it's a just a forking delightful uh addition i think i think that alone is going to be enough of a reason uh for me anyways to invest my time in the war within world of warcraft is a game for everybody and the more that they make it for everybody the less it becomes for everybody um in, in, or at least the less it becomes for some folks i really 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 sincerely hope that story is given the utmost um care and time and thought and I really sincerely hope that the War Within and the future expansions in the World Soul Saga take it seriously and make it count. Um, this is a chance for World of Warcraft to show its power as an IP when it comes to storytelling. 
uh, it has the characters, it has the world, it has all of that. It can easily rival, it can easily rival the likes of Final Fantasy XIV, one of the greatest stories ever told in gaming. And that's not hyperbolic. That is, that is, that is true. Uh, the, there's so much that they can do with story. And we've seen that if the story is good enough, the players will have the patience for it. World of Warcraft players like to get to endgame right away, so you know I expect it to be less of a focus than, say, Final Fantasy XIV. But I still desperately want to see the narrative, the main story narrative, be so important. Uh, I really do, um, and I'm I'm hopeful that that's where it's going to go. But I that that is my biggest my biggest thing. Please don't let this this beginning uh, part of the expansion, this thing that launches us into the war within. Please don't let it be just a shock factor thing. Uh, let's make it count. Let's earn that. Let's sit with it. Um, my biggest thing right now is we don't get to sit with it. We're we're immediately thrust into a, a quest where we have to fight fight off Nerubians right away. Um, we don't get to sit with it. We don't. There's no there's no aftermath. There's no aftermath. Period of of us taking the time to deal with that. And and maybe there will be once it's in context and built out and all of that. Um, but for right now, that's how I feel. That's my major concern going into going into this alpha. And I don't mean to be. I I, I think there's a whole lot of positives here, and I'm very excited to see the uh, the more more alpha builds. Uh, sincerely, it is it is a it is good. It is good World of Warcraft um, right now. And the Earthen are the my biggest surprise is the earthen i am i love them i love them so much more than i ever thought i would when it was for i was like I, earthen i honestly when they announced that i was like why the fork uh the female beard stuff is cool for sure but like i why are we you know this should just be a cosmetic choice for dwarves i don't know why is this being a thing um but i will i will say the way that they've done their culture is their culture and their lore is amazing um there is a hint at a new keeper by the way in the alpha there is a hint of a new keeper a, a keeper that we don't know anything about who might rival odin in terribleness we'll see uh very excited for that as well so keep your ears out uh if you hear anything about keeper gallon g-a-l-a-n let me know because i'm very intrigued I need to see more about that. Uh, we weren't able to test any of the raids. We were able to see a lot of the cosmetics, though, and the story of some of the raid bosses. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This has been a really long alpha first impressions video. Um, like I said, it was a stream of consciousness thing. I just wanted to put this out. This is all of my thoughts going into the alpha after two full days of playing. Let me know in the comments below what you all want to see for videos. Hopefully shorter than this one because holy shit, I talked for a long time. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you all in the alpha and the beta for the war within. Also, you can check out my stream, twitch.tv slash missile online. It'll be linked in the description. Uh, and you can follow me there. We'll be streaming. Uh, we'll be streaming a lot more World of Warcraft and uh, Final Fantasy 14. MMOs, MMOs, baby. This is a brand new World of Warcraft channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, let's see if we can if we can get this channel cooking. I used to upload channel on my I used to upload WoW on my main channel too, but with with everything I wanted, all the different con point is this is a WoW only YouTube channel now. So please hit that subscribe button, like the video, YouTube comments, all that. Help me get this video cooking so I can put out some videos and feel motivated to do it. Do it now. Click on, click it. Did did you making me yell at you for no reason? Never give up, never surrender. See you, nerds. <laughs>